And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, once again, apologies for having to do that little silly text recap there at the end of last game. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> bug replays in Brood War happen occasionally, and not much you can do about it when it happens. Um, we tried to get all the replays from both players and from the referee, but they were all broken. So we are like, yep. well, uh, time to go audiobook. And honestly, broken replays, if you haven't seen a broken <laughs> replay game, they can be just the most ridiculous thing you can imagine. Things that are literally impossible in Brood War can happen. Just yeah. ridiculous crap. Um, basically, for anyone who doesn't actually understand like how that happens, um, the way Brood War saves replays is a little bit weird. Instead of actually saving like you know what's what's actually going on, it saves the list of commands that the players execute. So cool. it's like instead of sa saving you know at this moment there's this many units and they're doing this, it's like it saves it the attack move again. commands and like the the mining yeah. commands and that. So it basically like just replays the actually replays the game using all the player commands. Yeah. But if somehow like you miss a command or it gets desynced with where the units are, the commands like start randomly executing and things don't actually happen properly. And like money starts getting really high, you don't make units and like random units attack and random things die. Um, yeah, if you want if you want more crazy experiences with bug replays, go check out the uh, <laughs> the gem league <laughs> replays or or casts with Sir Jolt. Um, oh. Anywhere Jolt goes, there are bound to be bug replays, and uh, and I think he has. Uh, <laughs> cursed us today as well. I mean, you get you get crazy. You get buildings morphing backwards and probes coming <laughs> out of extractors that explode. It's it's so stupid. It's it's amazing though. It's amazing. It's worth watching one just to see what happens. But you know, they're obviously not real. Uh, not actually what happened in the game. Yeah. Anyway, we do have one more game coming up in the group with a fully functional replay, I believe. So God. it is going to be a TVP between Skyline and Rams, a rematch from set number one. Should be exciting, should be good stuff. I mean, I'm not quite sure who to root for with this one because both these guys, obviously, there's no particular racial bias for me because, you know, I'm happy to see either of these guys. So it'd be nice to have a Protoss, but uh, Terran's provide a good bit of variety as well. So I'm just wanting to see an exciting game. I completely agree with you. And uh, game one was pretty interesting. So, um, yeah. I, I think we can just go into the game. Let's not drag it out any longer. Yeah, let's go for it. Game time. Final game of the night. Let's do it. Here we go into the game at the top right as the white protoss we have rams at the bottom left as the purple terran we have skyline yes this is going to be exciting stuff let's see how our invite in the form of skyline can perform right here invites so far have been a little bit of a lucky dip um only michael really uh performing as you might be expecting to doty regrettably crashing out in the last group as we saw um so yeah it's going to be a classic pvt um between these two powerhouse players and Rams and Skyline are actually both players I didn't see for quite a while. Indeed. Um, yeah. I don't actually know what happened to... Uh, well, I don't know what happened to Rams, and I don't actually know what happened to Skyline either. Skyline was was uh, more active more recently than Sky... Or, yeah. But, uh, Skyline was active more recently than Rams, because he played in yeah. Gambit's Cup and you know, he played in Nation Wars and whatnot. I don't actually know if Rams participated in Nation Wars. Um, um, uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't recall seeing him in the Liquipedia page, but uh, yeah, maybe he did. I don't know. Anyway, uh, looks like uh, we have a panel at the top here. I wonder if he actually thought he spawned at the bottom, and that's why he put that at the top. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that position is generally... Uh, well, actually, no, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that, that's actually fine. That's fine. It's fighting spirit. That's fine. Yeah. Fighting spirit. Sorry, I was looking on the... Uh... On the Team Liquid page, I'm trying to find if Rams has actually played the Nation Wars because it's really pissing me off because yeah. uh, I really should know this kind of thing and it drives me mad when I don't know my trivia. But yeah, I uh, can't find anywhere where Rams has been, so both these players kind of disappearing a, a little bit. Um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm curious once again to see how both players place the map because there's actually a fair amount of interesting stuff you can do uh, on Fighting Spirit if you choose to. It can be seen as a little bit of a boring, a little bit of a pedestrian map, but especially on these positions, if I take a quick look at the map, the Terran has um, a, a relatively accessible third base available to them. So that gives the Protoss, again, some, some nice options in terms of breaking, in terms of timing attacks. Um, once again, the Terran also, um, especially in these positions where both these guys have that accessible third base, the Terran also can keep a close eye on the Protoss' early expanding, perhaps, uh, early third and can make timing attacks accordingly so it can be actually quite a curious map to play on. Yeah and uh, going back to this building placement by the way I'm actually getting happier about this now that he put the core there that actually makes a lot more sense and yeah. Yeah it does. Bad. By the way um, Skyline in the chat says that Rams has 400 ladder games on IC Cup so I guess he has been active. <laughs> Thank god. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he's, no wonder he's looking good. Well he is in the final match though. He did lose to uh, DeWalt. Although now, That's true. excuse me, he's back playing his PVT and he did already beat Skyline once with his PVT, so uh, yeah, looking good for him so far, but I guess we'll see how things play out on Fighting Spirits. Looks like so far everything going as expected. I mean, standard. If, if you want a map to showcase how people play day in, day out, then Fighting Spirits is probably perfect one, especially for a guy who mass ladders on fish. I mean, this is going to be basically the only map he's played, so surely he's going to be incredibly comfortable. And that's probably why he's got very specific building placement as well, because, you know, this is just the map he will have been playing pretty much solidly, most likely. Yep. Oh, I'm being corrected. It was on fish and not IC Cup. My bad. My bad. Everyone's yelling at me. Ah, oh, it's terrible. Really? Yeah. I, th I thought you said fish. I think I said IC Cup. See, 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 see I elegant. Don't hear, this is my <laughs> big... <laughs> This is why you, I think you're like uh, space Pasadini. You see, you, you, you actually just take all the wrong things I say and in your head just turn them into the correct thing. Yeah, it's so some sort think, of uh, weird psychosomatic thing where I can't amazing. handle the idea of you making a mistake. See, we, well, why can't everybody be like that? Everybody should actually think like that. <laughs> yeah. Elegant, you should teach people to, to train them to, to believe that I'm always right. Yeah, oh my god, imagine what world we'd live in. You'd be a powerful man, Zale. That would be amazing. Yeah. I might even liquid bet correctly at some point. That'd be cool. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't liquid bet tonight. It would have been a disaster. I'm, I'm always one and one for these groups. I think I've only gotten correct both players on group F of the round of 24 where I predicted Rams and Terror. That's the only group I've gotten correct out of, what is this, the, the 10th group? Yeah. Ah, man. I thought uh, it'd be good at this too. You know, when when they start when, when they just announced the liquid bets, I was like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. I have such a good knowledge of like the foreigners, right? Because most people they know yeah. the Koreans, but not the foreigners. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is gonna be a piece of cake. I'm gonna be owning liquid bed. Nope. <laughs> nope. Absolutely not. I mean, I I tried, but I I was just awful because just nothing I expect to happen has been happening. And also, I have a nasty tendency to vote with my heart as well. Um, which means that I often get stuff wrong, even when I think I know what's going to happen. Uh, meanwhile, we do have a little bit of Dragoon pressure coming in. Mines are already done, however, and d uh, Rams should definitely know mines are done. Yeah, look, at that. staying well clear of that danger zone, because no matter how good your micro is, your Dragoon AI can get very easily confused when you start getting into there, uh, and those mines can just take to pieces in, in a matter of seconds. But on the upside for Rams, his natural expansion is going to be safe. However, um, the natural expansion of Skyrim is going to be safe as well. So both these guys are going to be taking it into the mid game. Fairly stable, fairly standard. Oh, this is going to be annoying. Is he going to. Oh! oh. Looks like he ate the mine on that one Dragoon. Um, is this, if this Vulture kills the probe though, before he can make a third. Ah, oh, that's a pain in the butt. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. And the thing that's is, really he doesn't annoying. actually know if there's more mines there, so he's just holding positioned goons here. Because for all he knows, there could be two more mines here, and he could just die if he just tries to run back. So he can't even go and defend his third base yet, and he can't even <clears> move back to his after. He's just kind of stranded until the Observer comes out. Just yeah. super duper annoying as a Protoss. Uh, I mean, you know, if he really wanted to, he could do some kind of fancy hold position micro to clear mines if there were any. But, you know, it just takes extra, extra APM and it's not completely necessary. And I don't think actually Rams is particularly good at it. I think he tried it in some previous games that we watched and it wasn't very good. <laughs> so oh, it may be better that he doesn't do that. Yeah, it's probably, it, I mean, if you're good at it, by all means, but if you're not, yeah. you're going to lose a lot of Dragoon's trying. Exactly. It's a very specific <coughs> micro technique just for Protoss, so if he doesn't play PvT that much, he won't necessarily um, have it skill. I mean, it's, it's like it's like Muta Micro, you know? I'm a Protoss player, yeah. so my Muta Micro sucks, so it's kind of like that. Well, you know, Scout Micro is kind of the same. <laughs> yep, because I make Scouts all the time. Yeah, well, I made Scouts the other day, so... Oh, yeah. well done, Alec. Who's cool now? <laughs> <laughs> you are very uh, cool, sir. My spare time is so so rich and fulfilling. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs>
making scouts. So um, that leads to a pretty significant delay for Rams on his third base. It looks like he's actually going to completely call it off for a while, just entirely. He's sending another probe down there, but there's going to be mines blocking that you know, that attempt right there. So he's going to have to make use of these. He's had to go up to four gateways now. So yeah, really significantly delayed. Wow, even at two probes there making the gateways. That's interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? It's not. It is slightly delayed, especially since they're cross positions. Um, but going for four gate before your third isn't like the end of the world. Um, if you're spacing, you know, a Terran who might be aggressive, and you think might go for some kind of two base shenanigans, you often do that anyway. Uh, it's just that I think that cross positions and and skyline's probably gonna go for this faster, which is exactly what he's doing right now. Um, yep. That you want the oh. faster third as the pros as well. So frustrating. <laughs> the Zealot goes down, pops up two of the mines, and then when it pops up the mine, it actually needs to get rid of. The Vulture somehow manages to land one shot to finish the Zealot off. Bad time. So the mine remains. He's having to send Dragoon in there to clean out that final mine. Very, very unfortunate right there. Or he's going to tank it. Yeah, he's going to tank it. He has to at this point. Otherwise, that third is never, ever going to establish. <laughs> and, and funnily enough, now Observers come out, so it doesn't even really matter anymore. But. Uh, yeah, this has been a really pretty significant delay, and I hope he has a backup plan in mind because this definitely did not look like what he was going for. And yeah, we do have uh, fast arbiters coming out on the way now, <clears throat> which actually could work fairly well, um, given that we have an early third base coming from Skyline. So either um, he can he can go for recall, and then he can either land the first recall on that third base, or he can land in the main base as well and stretch Skyline too thinly. Uh, so this can actually work to his advantage still. Uh, meanwhile, Skyline is probably going to be feeling pretty good. He should basically know what's going on and has managed to delay the process in that third base for quite a significant amount of time. Yeah, is it just me or have most of the PVTs we've seen today, if not all of them, been relatively quick arbiters? Yeah, um, it seems like it. I mean, two of them have obviously been played by Ram, so I guess that's part of his style, mm. but also the ones that, you know, Terra played against the Walt, <coughs> or sorry, not... Wait, Terra played against Droll, excuse me. Yeah. Um, Droll, you know, he went for the DT, expanded to Fast Arbiters as well there, so... Um, yeah, interesting that that, ter that uh, the Pros is doing that nowadays. Or, I don't know, maybe it's just a foreigner thing, or just something that they all somehow decided to do at the same time for a TLS today. Who knows? Yeah. Especially well, since since Droll lost his uh, build order sheet, maybe that was completely <laughs> planned, and it just randomly coincided with all the other Protoss builds. <laughs> I mean, it's quite an old school build, the um, the mid game arbiter build. It really is. Uh, um, I, I remember the first time when it was really done. It was a long, long time ago now. So it's a build that's really kind of stuck around. Um, but I'm surprised to be seeing it coming out quite so much, to be honest. Um, especially on slightly quirky map. Well, occasionally slightly quirky maps. Yep. And looks like a few vultures moving out towards a third, but they're going to get denied, of course. And looks like we have fourth base already as well. So looks like both players content to just uh, macro up here, just going to chill. Basically, like all the PvP teams we've seen so far today. Um, you know, not going to be anything too crazy until uh, the Terran is basically ready to, to, to move out. Um, whatever that may be, probably not for a while. He's going to do some nice little Vulture Rats here, kill a few probes. Even if you trade Vultures one for one with probes, you know, technically they're 25 more minerals, but um, generally I think it's that trade is fine. Mining, as long as you've so. used the Spider Mines already, I think that trade's fine. I'd, I'd say it's a pretty good trade, which which makes it easy to kind of make a vulture house pay for itself, and because they only they only take two shots to kill a probe, so it's very very easy. I like the fact that Rams has gone for observer speed. I often think that's overlooked by process players, but it makes so much difference. Because observers can actually really properly keep up with dragoons, and as long as you keep your eye on it, make sure it doesn't go too far ahead. But it's best than having it lagging behind. Indeed, where's his arbiter tribe being? I can't see it. Um, uh, it's, it's right in there, stuffed by his main net. Oh yeah, I'm just confused because there's like so many cluster. tech structures. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's getting his probe sucked out. God, uh, I hate this. This happens to me so much. There's just like, oh, this random gateway position that just freaks <laughs> the probe out. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, this one actually wasn't that bad. The probe's gone out, but I think if you make the two gateways like one hex higher, the probe's yeah. gonna get stuck in an infinite loop in the gateways. It's just the most ridiculous thing ever because you're trying to make these cool-looking gateways and you're like building them all next to each other and then the probes get stuck on them. <laughs> you don't see it, and even when you see it, it's like impossible to fix it. Because ah. you take so much APM to deal with it, and then you're like, I, I have to be doing other things. This is just not worth my time. It makes me so mad. It happened to me in a ladder game just like two days ago. I was just so angry. <laughs> ah, God. You know, know what you God. do? Then? Storm your probes, your stack of probes, just to make an example of them. Seriously, that's actually a good idea. I'm gonna do that next time. Yeah, you should do like, okay, I need the supply, I don't oh, no, no. Maybe maybe you can stasis them and they'll all clump up and glitch out and like phase across the gateway. <laughs> yeah. And then when they become unstasis, you can just transfer them normally because they're on the other side. Oh, oh it's genius. Cool. I just figured out deep. how to fix it. Yes! That's stasis your fix. probes. All there right. are literally no sweet. flaws with that fix. That's brilliant. That's good. 
I'm pretty smart. I'm pretty smart. That's I'm another use of fast arbiters right there. Exactly. That's exactly why they're doing it. Yeah. See, that's the gift that just keeps on giving. Fast arbiters. <laughs> <laughs> no end of possibilities. Dragoon's pushing over to the top left hand corner now. Might be able to catch up these vultures. Vultures are annoyingly quick though, so unless he leaves it like one or two dragoons blocking the ramp, this vulture's probably going to be able to make it out and pass the oncoming dragoons. But the fourth base has been established for rounds, so economically he's in a fairly decent shape. Versus Skyline's three base as well, who's also going to be feeling fairly stable about how he's going with the two armories pumping away now as well. Um, and yeah, it looks like these players are both perfectly happy just taking it into the long game, um, just demonstrating a little bit of confidence in their abilities. I'm interested to see how Skyline plays this though, because um, it's, it can be a little bit difficult to establish a fourth. Indeed. Uh, I mean, I would assume he's going to move towards the 6 o'clock, but as you say, it takes a little... It re, well, you have to cover a little bit more ground, um, kind of this area where the droplets are moving out right now. And it is going towards the third base. Notice he's kind of running the vultures along the ground uh, to support the droplet when it gets over there. Probably going to start sieging down this third base, using the vultures to, to cover as well. And that's going to be quite annoying for the process to deal with. He's going to have to send the units around the back here to kind of run yep. back up, but shouldn't be too tricky. Oh no, I think he's just going to drop on the outside. Okay, I thought he might try and drop in the back on the right corner there. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. this is getting a little bit unfortunate for rounds because he's trying to get back there to defend, but the, sh the uh, dropship is actually shuttling vultures over, which are going to set town on those probes, and there's now only three probes remaining, so a really pretty heavy loss for him very, very quickly. It's amazing to underestimate quite how much damage those vultures will do when you think you can stand and fight. Really, it's not an option. And now with the dropship going into the main as well, looks like he will survive, and two vultures are going to be getting into the main base, but there are no photon cannons. They're going to be able to grab themselves a few more probe kills. If he keeps his eye on that and actually micros it, there is a photon cannon being made in the uh, mineral line, but that's really not going to be enough for too long. And surprise, he's not doing anything with those vultures. That's a little bit frustrating. Look at those probes, anyway. man! Look at those probes! They can't leave! I know. They cannot oh, get out! They, Look, they're going to go they're back! Going all the way around the gateways. Look! They're going to get stuck again! Ah! Oh, no, they're, they're okay, they're okay. They're going out. Oh, Eventually, but the vultures have missed the window. The vultures have missed the window. Meanwhile, though, Skyline looks like he's actually going to start pushing out. Um, maybe just take fourth base, but maybe do something a little bit more sinister. I think he's probably not ready for a major push as of yet, uh, since his uh, weapons upgrade is still going. He'd want to wait for the 2-1, ideally, but it looks like he is going to make some decent headway uh, while the process army is distracted. Yeah, um, Rams is maxed out now, though, and it uh, looks like Skyline is still chilling at 166. Uh, Rams got that, it's got that base at the bottom right. Looks like Sun very well prepared now for uh, any kind of recall. Oh, actually, no, this looks like there's a bit of a space here behind the natural. He's got an engineering bay at least spotting. Now building the fourth command center, ready to go take the six o'clock. Looks like Sun really not thinking about doing a huge push at all. Just gonna go turtle up and take that fourth base. And oh man, a few goons suiciding into the uh, uh, spider mine. Oh, uh, could have been worse. Could have been worse. Yeah. And looks could like uh, Rams gonna try and deny. This little area right here. Oh, Skyline is unseating. Where's he going? He's actually going the other direction. Oh no, looks like he's just kind of rearranging his army a little bit so they can all kind of go in a giant wave of Terran metal. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it is, it's really nice tank line he's got actually going on there. I mean, I don't see any way that uh, the rounds could possibly break that. Oh, losing a few too many Dragoons there. He left himself in for a little bit too long. Oh, left himself he, quite vulnerable. He left half his army behind there. I think he got his control rooms messed up or something. Half his army was chilling in the back. All his zealots were chilling in the back. Oh, wait, no, no, never mind. I think he was just clearing mines with the Dragoons. Yeah, yeah, he got he a was, little bit ahead of himself. Got a bit overexcited. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, oh my god, he's taking another base at the top left. Man, Rams is going crazy. Rams loves doing this. Just mass expanding against Terran, and it worked in the first game. So, uh, let's see how <laughs> this goes. Hopefully it's not another dropped game. <laughs> oh my god, imagine that. Imagine finishing like that. Two two dropped games and one bug replay. We would be deeply unpopular. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not what people came for. We do have a couple of fights up. I'm running the risk of getting chased down right here. That storm's definitely going to be handy if he can keep oh this high templar alive. Going for the God, engagement there's now. a fleet of four arbiters and there's high templars as well. Elegant, where are the vultures? I don't see any vultures. I have literally no, no idea. Support. Where are the there's... storms? Where are the storms? It looks like he's being imbued or something. I don't see any storms. Oh, Recall of Dragoons. But they get annihilated and somehow without any vultures, Skyline takes the engagement. I don't even understand. What? even was that why would you why would you i don't why would you do that why would you recall the dragoons on top of the army that was just the, the, like the last thing he, he wanted to be doing right there he used a single stasis that only got a single siege tank and he used like one storm as well even though he had so many spells i don't i don't know why he didn't use any of his spells oh we have the siege tanks running into units right here which are cloaked and that might give rams storm to the edge but it looks like skyline is going to be able to prevail storm in the battle it. still no storm for rams and that high tempo 
without putting up any fight whatsoever with 141 energy. Big, big shame to see that go down right there. Um, and Ramses is basically having to... Uh, oh shit, he doesn't have Storm, my bad. <laughs> he doesn't have Storm. Oh, oh I, I could have sworn he stormed there once. And I was like, oh, he definitely has it. But he actually doesn't have Storm. Oh, that's my bad. But he's had that's that for so long. He has. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe uh, tiredness starting to show itself a little bit right there. Um, but he is still macroing fairly well. He does have a decent number of gateways as well. I'm just trying to do a quick count of them now. He has maybe um, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so 15, decent number, especially when you compare it to the Terrence Factory count, which is uh, eight, eight factories in total. So I think that should be enough to provide Rams with an overall, overwhelming advantage in the supply race. Uh, but the top left-hand corner base is going to go down. The bottom right-hand corner base is actually looking like it's not going to be too long for this world either, which will leave Rams uh, on only well, kind of a total of roughly... Oh, but a recall at the 6 o'clock, Elegant. A recall at the 6 is going to oh, nine nice. that base as well. Get a couple of high Templars there. They still didn't storm, even though I'm pretty sure he has it now. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like a few tanks are going to siege up the bottom right, as you said. So it looks like it might actually go back down to 4 base-ish against 2. So he's actually not in a terrible position. Looks like he MP'd on that Arbiter and the high Templar as well. Um, so he's kind of... Actually, wait. He's still maxed out. How is he still maxed out? I actually don't know. Where is all his army? I don't know. How? Wait, wait a minute. What? How, that, how that's on not earth possible. can he be maxed out? There is no way he's maxed out. I actually, I call... The game I is call, lying. I call impossible on that. There is no way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any units. He's got some in his natural. It's only like two control groups, okay, though. Okay, he's only on 178 now. That's kind of a bit more believable once he groups all his units together. But still... <laughs> Goodness me, he doesn't he doesn't look like he's on high supply at man, all. He must have like a hundred supply of probes or something ridiculous. Anyway, oh man, he's going in here. The tanks are on siege. He does have some zealots this time. There's a couple of high temple coming in. If they can get some good storms off, everything is clumped. He might get a good zealot bomb. Oh. There's the storms! on everything and he is gonna clean up the rest of Skyline's army. Skyline dropping to 152. It looks like Rams though is not much higher so the supply is staying even but the thing is Rams, sorry Skyline rather is only mining off his main and this third base and he's not really mining off his main either. He needs to reclaim the six o'clock base. Uh, oh no he still has natural as well but I mean everything is getting very very hand. close to mined out. Yeah he gets the top left hand corner base and he managed to, to reclaim that off Ram but nonetheless that's still uh, gonna be a while before that kicks in. You can see his minerals going up in absolute uh, trickle right here. Um, his opponent not doing too much better, but doing slightly better. 159 supply right now um, for Rams versus still 158 for Skyline. It's still pretty well on the edge. These guys going very, very much even. It's still anyone's game, and Skyline is continuing to push, being very, very proactive. Uh, and, and meanwhile, Rams not in the best position. His army is very spread out. Where all his supply is still, my goodness, I really, really couldn't tell you. Uh, but once again, <laughs> Interesting stages on that science vessel there, which might just get the units in, but the scan is very, very quick for Skyline. Rams is trying to get in there and do some damage, but he really needs all his units to go at once. He's going in in little bits, taking a nasty mine to his remaining zealots right there. Uh, this is not what he needs to be happening at all. However, the cloaked zealots seem to be doing a lot more damage than they would otherwise be doing. Nice storm gets landed as well, taking out two siege tanks and just kind of managing to keep the army to a reasonable level. However, the supply has swapped around now. Skyline, 10 supply ahead. Indeed he is, he's also taking the bottom right natural as well as reclaiming the 6 o'clock. Things are looking very, very dire for Rams right now, and he's got to stop throwing the units away piecemeal. He's got to group up a larger clump of units, you know, maybe get some really good storms off once again. Not throw away the Arbiters like that, and, uh, and maybe try and break this position, because he really needs to break this or his 3 oh. o'clock is going to die. And, oh man, there's a good storm on the all the Vultures. Does he have any units to follow up though? It doesn't look like he has quite enough units behind, dropping down to 130 supply against the 150 supply of Skyline. He's just throwing the units away right now. Just charging Dragoons down. That's not how he wants to do it. Four random probes at the bottom. I don't know what they were doing at the bottom right there. I think they remade a Nexus that just got promptly destroyed by the tank that was there. A random faces on two tanks, but the Goons have to pull back though. There's no chance for them. Uh, meanwhile, oh man, there was a tank drop as well on the 3 o'clock. The oh. Arbiter's trying to kill it, but it's just killing all of the probes right now. Nine kills. It's going to be 10 kills, 11 kills already, and this position is still not done. Yeah, and I think once again we see the, the real danger of just mass expanding when you haven't quite got the infrastructure behind it to hold up because it just makes you critically vulnerable at that point. You're spread way too thinly, you're trying to defend way too much, uh, maybe overproducing on probes a little bit as well to try and saturate those bases a little bit too far, uh, and it's really, really come back to haunt him. Uh, and once again we see Rams bash down to much fewer bases than he was previously on oh, the Terran. I think I'll take your advantage. Coming elegant. There's an Arbiter going down the middle of the map. Oh. It's got almost 150 energy. He's doing a bit oh. of uh, 
Juke and Jive in here, and there's a couple of turrets here. Oh, he's got almost enough energy, five more energy. I hope he doesn't go in and die before he has enough energy to actually recall. Okay, no, there yeah, we it go. It looks like he's aware of that, and he's like, he definitely wants to make sure that it doesn't happen now. He's going to be able to go. He might land on that spider bomb. Which looks very Eats the does, line, but it's alright. Yeah. Oh, man, he recalled three arbiters as well. <laughs> Not sure if that was on purpose. I, I think it probably wasn't. It's like he's dashing out of their post haste with all of them. They might get killed on the way back though. There's four Goliaths, which might be able to completely ignore them as they fly <laughs> innocently overhead. Never mind. So those Goliaths seem to not really, not really give a damn. But that's okay. The Dragoons are going to be able to take down the command center. Um, should actually be able to make an escape as well if they're careful. Meanwhile, a little bit of harassment going to the bottom American corner, which is easily cleaned up. We can see now um, that Skyline is starting to make use of his superior map presence. He's taking the bottom right hand corner natural. He should be able to take the top left hand corner base as well. In which case, he'll be in a great position uh, against the ailing economy of his process opponent. Yep, and it looks like a small force, uh, force of the Terran is actually attacking the 12, and the wall of the Pearl sector working against him finally gets a couple of zealots out there to take care of this. Uh, that was being quite annoying, but the problem is he's lost his 3 o'clock already. His main and his natural are mined out. He's only mining now from the 12 o'clock base, and he doesn't even seem to have that many probes there either. I don't know where all his probes went. I guess he just lost them. No, he's got a lot idle at his natural. Looks like a few idle at his main as well. Um, continue to try and do some counterattacks, but it's not working. He's, he's actually still got four probes at the bottom right main there. Could maybe kill that SCVB yeah. to the command center, but uh, but looking very very that'd bad now. That'd be a small victory maps. indeed. Yeah, that'd be a very small victory. <laughs> I mean, he, he can prevent that for a little bit, but it's going to go up eventually anyway. And um, you know, Skyline has really pretty good SCV saturation um, at that bottom right hand corner. Naturally, he's going to be easily able to saturate another base as soon as it comes up, and he's just roaming the map now with huge amounts of units uh, and. You know, Ramans needs to get a big engagement right now to go his way. Uh, oh, Recall going to the bottom right-hand corner right there, dropping a whole bunch of units in. Looks like he's going to be able to take out a good number of those safety SCVs. Might be able to take the command center with him as well as small Recall. Might be able to do the damage nonetheless before the main Terran army gets back. Um, I definitely think he should try and take down that command center. That's what's absolutely instrumental for these, this type of Recall. He's going to go down and maybe be able to take out the STV um, as well. Okay, the command center, it looks like, is going to survive pretty much, or actually completely unscathed. Not a single hit going down on that. It looks like the SCV, oh, cancels the command center as well. I don't know if that was entirely necessary. Um, but this is pretty much the entire process army right now, depressing me. And uh, it's going to go down quite easily. Yeah, he's got one more Arbiter. He can actually just recall these uh, three Dragoons out if he really wants to. Uh, probably should actually just go and deny the 6 o'clock once again, which is actually going to make it quite interesting because that means, uh, you know, Skyline's going to be back down to his original three bases and loses a dropship there at the 12 o'clock as well without actually dropping. Meanwhile, a probe has somehow snuck over here to the top left, crossing a crazy minefield and uh, managed to build another base. And there is the recall out, although it looks like he forgot one Arbiter, although I guess that doesn't really matter. He's just flying home anyway. Yeah. But uh, going to get instantly cleaned up here. Nothing you do. Not even attacking, actually. Just running around in circles doesn't even know what to do anymore he's got 3,000 gas banks maybe it's just mass archons or something yeah well, well I can't really think what else he can do with it I mean it's better than massing arbiters yeah and he could well, he can make a lot Zella of storm. having a fit here oh never mind yeah Zella absolutely himself. freaking out in the natural he could he could go for a mass storm <laughs> but again because you can't really use that many storms it probably wouldn't be entirely beneficial, so uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult to know how you could properly spend that gas. Mass Archons probably would be the best way to go, despite the fact that EMP renders them quite useless pretty easily. Um, but there may not be time to consider it too much because Skyline's science push. I mean, Skyline um, still not on too much supply. It's still quite a long way from max, 169 supply, but um, his opponent runs only on 106 supply and fast dwindling now, 84 supply. Um, wow, we can see how quickly that goes down. And he just got a handful of Dragoons backed up by a little bit of Psystorm. I mean, it's really not going to be good enough. A lot of those siege tanks going down, though. Um, so not the best cost efficiency right there from Skyline, uh, to say the least. But I think pretty much all the Psystorm uh, is done now. I know there's still a couple more remaining, so he might still be able to land some decent damage on what's left of his Terran army. I don't know why he's actually not using those Storms. I mean, uh, you know, if you're going to make that many High Templar and basically not be having anything mining, you know, what else is he actually spending his APM on? You know, he doesn't have any money to build stuff. Might as well just, you know, storm everything. Storm the crap out of everything. Kill yep. everything with storms. It's, it's actually uh, surprisingly good against, you know, unsieged stuff. Yeah. Um, storm's range is pretty good, and it only takes two storms to kill everything in the turn off. GG. GG from Rams. Skyline gets revenge for his loss in this first set and advances out of the group. So we have another Terran going through. Yes, we, Skyline we. and DeWalt advance from Group D. Wow. So this means, hang on, this means that in a foreign tournament, 
we have more representation for Terran than for Protoss. Huh. Who saw that coming? Clearly Protoss is the easy race. Am I right? So obvious now. Yeah. <laughs> Should be clear to, to everybody what the truth is. But I, I really couldn't have guessed that in my wildest dreams, and that's why I would suck at Liquibet. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, decent performance there at the end from Skyline, just being able to squeeze out Rams in a longer game. They both they both knew what they were getting into. They both opted for the, for the long game. Uh, and, yeah, Skyline was just able to take it straight up. Rams um, looked a little bit careless at times and didn't look like he had himself quite together. So um, congratulations to Skyline for being the final player who advances from those groups. Indeed. And the third invite to advance. Only Dodi yes. didn't advance out of the invites. Yeah, that's the really Protoss not too bad. One. The Protoss one. That's, yeah, oh, I mean, I'm disappointed because I thought Doty was like one of the most surefire players to advance. Yeah. He promised me he'd be in the finals. He promised. Yeah. I know. He broke his promise. That's all right. Dewalt's my new hero. <laughs> Go, Dewalt. Anyway, yes, as you said, congrats to Dewalt and Skyline. And ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere because we are now going to somewhat unofficially announce. I guess it's officially actually because we're official, right? Yeah, we're pretty official. We're official. Alright, we're going to officially announce the round of eight matchups so you guys don't have to wait forever. Uh, I know everyone will be super excited about who it's going to be. And I have oh, a yeah. fancy schmancy graphic which I'll need to unprofessionally load into XSplit. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> here we go. Alright. Don't panic! Don't panic! Don't panic! I hope they can. I hope you guys can still hear me. I think you can. All right, here we go. Ah, oh, isn't that pretty? Uh, I'm waiting for it. I, I, I'm watching the stream as well. Oh, hello. All right, here we go. Here is our round of eight: Z South Park versus Skyline, Michael versus Terror, Eonzerg versus Nemu, and Dewalt versus Ziki. Oh my God, we don't have a ZVZ. Wow. I'm so happy. That has actually worked out amazingly enough. Well, so. So we could potentially end up with no Zergs <laughs> after the round of eight. <laughs> or be... the other way you look at it is we could potentially end up with an all Zerg semi-final. <laughs> it's MSL, guys. We're the MSL. <laughs> MSL wow. didn't actually die. It just changed its name to TLS. Yeah. And kind of took a little bit of a break. Now it's back and forth. That's, that's really fascinating. That, that oh man, and guys, we didn't even rig it. Look, you can see the seeding pattern on the graphic. It's just A1 through D1 and then reverse order for the second place players. It's Whoa. completely standard seeding and somehow we've gotten no ZVZs. This is actually crazy. That's really fortunate. Wow. I, I'm, I'm incredibly glad. Well, about I see some people football. asking what it's going to be. It's going to be a best of five. It's now just single elimination bracket from the round of eight onwards. Best of five for everything except the finals, which are best of seven. Um, the map pool is Jade. Well, it's the same as what we've been using so far. So it's Jade, uh, Ground Zero, Electric Circuit, uh, Sniper Ridge, and Fighting Spirit. Um, not in that order necessarily. I'm not sure exactly what the map order is, but we will announce it in, uh, fairly soon. And we'll, of course, we'll tell the players ahead of time. Yes, indeed. So that is very exciting. This should all be on Liquipedia very soon as well, so don't worry. Uh, even after the stream is over, if you forget, you can go uh, look it up as well. You don't have to frantically write this all down on Notepad or anything like that. Because you're that dedicated. <laughs> hey, if I was watching the stream, I would totally do that. Yeah, I know. I'd be, all be over. like, oh man, just fawn over these matchups and just trying to envision who's going to make it to the semifinals. I'm already doing that. All right, so back to the caster screen. And with that, I want to give a final shout out to our sponsors, Razor and Twitch TV. Huge thanks to them, huge thanks to Team Liquid, of course, as well. And thanks to all the viewers for tuning in and checking us out. And yeah. uh, I hope to see you guys in the round of eight. We're, we're not having any breaks next weekend, Saturday, 21 CET, going straight into the round of eight. Uh, we're at, oh no, we're actually casting both Saturday and Sunday. So we're gonna do uh, the first two matches on Saturday and then the next two matches on Sunday. So it's gonna be a full weekend of TLS. It's gonna be amazing. And uh, you guys should all tune in. It's going to be super intense, but yeah, thanks a bunch, guys, for tuning in. It really makes all the difference. So those were just crazy guys talking to ourselves. So thank you very much for watching, and hope you watch again next weekend. It's going to be good. Thank you all, and good night. Good night.